These are the dragons, five of Britain's wealthiest and most enterprising business leaders, who will either make or break the dreams of dozens of budding entrepreneurs. The multi-billionaire investors have each built up their fortunes from scratch. Hotel and club owner Duncan Bannatyne, leisure industry expert Deborah Meaden, retail magnate Theo Papites, telecoms giant Peter Jones, and Hilary DeVay, who made her millions in the haulage industry. The dragons have the cash to invest, but only in the right business. Hi, I'm Evan Davis, and today on The Dragon's Den, we're going to be looking to five creative entrepreneurs to share their vision of what they think the advertising and branding industry will be like in 10 years time. They're very confident in their pitch, but will the dragons be convinced? Hello there, my name is Victoria, and these are my contemporary associates. Right. Today we are not looking for any kind of investment, but instead want to share with you a small presumption which may one day make a big impact in the advertising and branding industry. Mm -hmm. Our hypothesis is that in 10 years' time, each consumer market will be dominated by one, or in some cases, a few giant brands, mm -hmm. as opposed to tens competing. Look at Coca-Cola. They own Bacardi, Fanta, Oasis and Dr Pepper. Hello, I'm Theo, by the way. Hang number on second here. You're saying Coke already owned by Dr. Pepper? Hello Theo, I'm Mary. It is true, Coca-Cola does own Dr. Pepper. So you're saying that in the future the experts think that large companies will own multiple brands and will be marketing leaders? Afternoon, I'm Alex. Pleased to meet you. Exactly Theo. Believe it or not, the same company that produces Pringles also owns Pampers Nappies. This is totally preposterous. Therefore, I am out. In a shock turn of events, retail magnate Theo Pafites has pulled out. He owns many brands and can't see them all being sold on. Hi, I'm Duncan. So, would you say there are any upsides for the smaller companies in your theoretical future of clandestine hand-to-hand -hand takeover? Hi, I'm Matt. Of course there's an upside, as well as the larger companies making hefty lump sums from the smaller companies' perspective. They can make a tidy sum when their company is being bought out. When you get bought out, it doesn't take long before the name of the brand becomes the product. This is known as generic branding. So, this generic branding, I've heard of it, but can you give me some examples? Think about it this way, you don't vacuum the house anymore, you hoover it. And right now, you're writing with a biro, not a ballpoint pen. <laughs> this is getting really scary now. I never knew biro was a brand name, not a product. And for this reason, I'm out. Things have gone from bad to worse for our hopefuls. They've lost their second dragon. Will they be able to rectify their situation? Well, to help you believe it, an up and coming term is Google it, rather than search for it on the internet. There are so many other examples I could give you. Okay, hi, I'm Hillary by the way. I understand what you're saying, but if I was one of these small companies, how would I establish my brand in a way that everyone would become to know that brand as the product's name? As time progresses, there will be more consumers buying a product with help from the reputation of bigger companies. Eventually, you'll we'll get to the point where consumers will just become walking advertisers. Everyone's going to want the same brands to keep in fashion. What about the exceptions? In that, I mean the people who don't want to be the norm and just to be different. As well as walking advertisements, there is already the idea of personalised advertising in, in place, which targets individuals. Look at Google. They make your internet browser, they own YouTube, they organise your email, and Google Plus is a new social network set for the future. They are watching you. They, they know who you talk to, what you watch, and what you search for. Therefore, the advertising you see online can be tailored to you. In the future, this could manifest into the adverts you see in the real world. If you had an iPhone in your pocket, then when you walk past the interactive billboard, it lights up and the adverts are paid for iPhone apps, or other Apple products. It assumes you like the products you've already bought and the adverts will be tailored to that. So I'm intrigued. I'd like to make you an offer. Well actually, we're just showing you an idea. We don't want any investment. Just your time. Then you have all the time I can give. I was going to invest, but seeing as I don't like Peter, there is no way I'll be parting with my money. The tension in the den builds. And after a disagreement, Duncan Bannatyne has pulled out. How will the remaining dragons react? I can totally see this happening as it's already started. In the next 10 years, I think it will happen. I would love to make an offer as well. Fantastic, you've all done so well. Two of the dragons were interested and are willing to make an investment. What do you think, Viscom?